Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Marianapolis Athletic Department Alumni Interview Series. My name is Andrew Vitale, and I'm the Director of Athletics at Marianapolis. And today, I'm here with Marianapolis Class of 2013, Class of 2017, Southern Connecticut State University OWL, and current <laughs> professional basketball player, Mike Mallory. Mike, thanks for taking the time to talk with me today. Uh, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. All right. Mike, your Marianapolis story actually begins with your senior year at Holy Cross in Waterbury. Tell us about that year and how you ended up coming to Thompson, Connecticut. Um, well, that year started off really great. Uh, uh, I was playing basketball. I was averaging 30 points. And second game of the season, I tore my ACL. Kept trying to play on it because I had some college coaches interested, but I had decided to get the surgery. And I actually was lost. I didn't know what was going to happen, where I was going to go. And then on a random Friday afternoon, a wonderful guy named Andrew Vitale gives me a call. Still wondering how he got my number that day. Uh, gives me a call, tells me, uh, you know, he heard about my situation, is interested. I went up on a Saturday. I committed on a Sunday. Um, happened that fast and uh, changed my life. I really did. And I'm, I think I told you already, I'm grateful. So that is, that is all of it in a nutshell. So your postgraduate year at Marianapolis was a bit of a tale of two years. There was the 2012 side and then the 2013 side. Tell us a little bit about that. 2012 side that enabled you to have such unbelievable success after the new year? Um, well, that 2012 side was, was an adjustment period, um, you know, moving into a new environment. I'm still, you know, trying to stay focused on basketball and what my goals were. But, you know, I had, I had you, I had Coach Cross, and then my biggest help, I would say, was Coach Buddy. Um, he also had some ACL injuries and, you know, he let me know, like, if you put in the work, you know, things will turn out the best that they can. So between classes, he would tell me to get on the bike for a certain amount of time. And then once class was over, uh, we were about to have like runs. I would go downstairs and, you know, we would do our therapy session. And then once I gradually progressed, um, we start moving to the court, start jumping things of that nature. And, uh, he just stayed on me. He stayed on me and, um, it was exactly what I needed. And that 2012 side was tough. I had some, had some ups and downs, but, uh, it was great. It was great. I needed it. So you were named first team all NEPSAC class double a only playing the second half of the season and eventually earned a scholarship to division two Southern Connecticut state university. What about those practices and games? Uh, in January, February, and March, really prepared you for the next level? Uh, I had a lot of built-up energy. I was I was so ready to play. I remember I remember 2012, you guys would be like, hey, you can't be out here yet. And I'm like, all right, but I feel great. But the moment I got cleared, it was off to the races. Um, practices were already competitive and the type of guy I am, like, that's what I love. And the moment I stepped on the court, I just decided to push everybody and I was very hungry. And then once the games came, I was playing against, you know, NBA and overseas pro prospects. Um, Wayne Selden, NBA, uh, Matt Mobley plays at the top of the European. Those are guys like, I was like, I wanted, this is why I want to compete with. This is why I'm here. And uh, when you get pushed to that level, you have to up your level. So once I was put in that situation, it just was, uh, all or nothing. It was either I was going to do what I came here to do, or I was going to fold, and I don't fold. <laughs> then on to Southern Connecticut as a freshman, and probably the best team you had while at Southern. Um, and as much as it was a learning experience for you, you were uh, very much a key contributor on that team coming off the bench. Uh, what was that year like? you being your freshman year and that team having so much success that year was a dream a blur um 
I actually, after the year, I thought that's how college was supposed to be the whole time. Um, the team is by far the best team I've ever been a part of. Uh, we still talk to this day, all of us. Um, going in, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know how it was going to be used. And I remember the practice where everything changed. I was struggling probably the first month. And then uh, I shot a shot in practice and it missed. And I kind of dropped my head. Coach Donnelly stopped practice, walked over to me and said, I don't care that you missed. Like, that's the shot I want you to take. Keep shooting. And then once those are like the magic words to me, I'm a, I was like, okay, that's, I can do that. And from literally that point on, it was just go out there and play basketball. And then I had great captains and great teammates that just no one wanted to take the ball out of my hands. It was just if you play defense, whoever is open and the best opportunity there is, there was no one selfish. There's no one jealous of anything. We all want to see each other succeed. And that's why we ended up winning the any 10 in the region. And one of our captains was player of the year, All-American. I was rookie of the year freshman All-American, all because we all pushed each other and helped each other to be great. And we're, to this day, we, you know, we're still very, very close. In your four years at Southern, you not only became the all-time leading scorer in the school's history, uh, but also the all-time leading scorer in any 10 conference history. Uh, what do those records mean to you? And what will you remember most uh, from those any 10 conference games? Those records mean a lot to me um, because I went from senior year, didn't know where I was going. I was hurt, didn't know what was going to happen to all the hard work I put in. Um, and just to trust my coaches had in me, like yourself, my teammates had in me to lead us and put the ball in the basket. Um, and then all the hard work that my family and loved ones uh, instilled in me. Uh, I owe a lot to them. I wouldn't be here without them. And just that is just a little, you know, repayment, just having Mallory in the record book is great. Um, and those, any 10 battles, those were amazing. Uh, they're, every team had a great guard, so it was a great battle every night. Well-coached teams. Uh, basically, that league is how we described it was. Something had to happen where you didn't go mid to low D1. So you got to go to any 10 and it's the best, it's the best D2 conference in the Northeast. So uh, we send five teams to the tournament every year. So it's very competitive and uh, I do miss it. I do miss it. You're now three years removed from Southern and playing professionally all over the world. Tell us where have you been playing and what those experiences have been like? Yeah, three years, wow. Um, I've been to Bosnia twice, Macedonia, Romania, and this past season I played in Serbia. Um, those experiences, there's a whole the the roller coaster is all up and down. Um, but I enjoy them. There's something I will never, you know, never I wouldn't have experienced it without basketball and thought what I've been through. So I enjoy them. They uh they keep me going. Um, you know, my my dad wanted to be a professional basketball player. He ended up having me, so I kind of try to have him live vicariously through me, or vice versa, however it is. Uh, but yeah, they're great. Um, those experiences each each country is very different with their style of play, so you have to get adjusted. Um, some are fast, some are slow, some are very physical, um, some are more tactical. So. Um, I think I love each challenge because obviously there's there's great players, but also you're you're playing against coaches too, and you know trying to get seen and move up and play at the highest level you possibly can play at. What do you hope to be doing next year, uh, and what do you hope to do when your playing career is over? So next year, I had a pretty good season last season. So next year, I'm hoping to move up to a very high level competition somewhere in Europe and perform again, perform great again on that stage. Um, and just keep progressing, just keep moving up, keep getting, uh, keep getting better each day and keep, uh, you know, keep trying to be the best Michael I can be. 
And once I'm done, uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, I love real estate. I love investing. I'm a big time investor. So I kind of want that to be incorporated in my life. But I also, I want to give back. So I think my way of giving back is going to teach financial literacy to kids. Because if I would have been able to start early, I think I would be in a much better situation, even though I'm not in a bad one, but in a much better situation than I am in now. And, you know, a lot of schools don't really teach financial literacy yet, especially at a young age. So I think that would be great. And giving back with basketball, I know uh, I train some kids now and I really enjoy it. So I think uh, those are some things. Real estate's number one, though. I'm, I need a couple of properties. Absolutely. Uh, lastly, uh, you're now, even hard for me to say it, seven years removed <laughs> from your time in scenic Thompson, Connecticut. Uh, what do you miss most about Marianapolis? And give us one or two of your fondest memories of your year at Marianapolis. What I miss most is the people. I miss the people. I miss my group um, that I used to really hang out with. And I still used to, I used to interact with everyone. Everyone is very friendly, you know. I miss I miss Shauna. I miss uh, Dave. I miss Eric, Greg, Bobby, um, Kathleen. Those are those are my guys, and everyone I that I missed. Um, the people were great. Uh, those relationships that I built. I mean, even if we're not in contact, those are lifelong, and um, I'm grateful for them. And a memory, a memory, a good one. I remember. It's gonna be a sad one but it's a good one. I remember my grandmother passed away and we had a game. I want to say the next day you, you called me, you were the second person to call me. And, you know, you, uh, you told me, you know, I'll be there for you, whatever you need, you know, and uh, that right there helped me. And I stayed, uh, I stayed for the game. And it was a very, a very big, big time school, with a lot of big time prospects. And it was by far my best game I had. Um, and obviously I had a, I had a special angel watching me. So that was, that's my most sustained memory. And then another one is, uh, we played a game. I forget the name of the school, but because of the, the it was raining in the per, uh, preparation of the floor, we couldn't finish the second half. So we postponed the game. And then on a random Monday afternoon, we played the game. Matt Mobley hits a corner three to put him up. And I also had a the first half, whatever that day was, I had a terrible game. And then that second half, I ended up with like 20 in the second half. And then Bobby, <laughs> Bobby gets the ball out of bounds and throws it to the Raptors. <laughs> and we just need to get the ball in. And I remember looking at him and I wasn't mad. I thought it was so funny. And he was so mad that day, but that that was a great memory. That's a great one. I remember yeah, that. What Wor Worcester Academy. Worcester, uh, yes. <laughs> I was calling the game because of the floor. It was super humid, and then we played it on a random day. And it may or may not have come up when I've talked to Bobby recently. Uh, <laughs> he became very red. Uh, he inbound for those who don't know the play. He inbounded the ball and, and threw it off the ceiling. And then Worcester got the ball, and Matt Mobley hit a crazy shot, and, and we lost. Crazy but shot. Definitely memorable, for sure. Memorable, memorable. I also, wait, one more. I also remember your first daughter was born, too. That's a big one. That, that's a big one. And it was Sienna, right? Yep. Yep. Good. Good. Yeah. That was your year. She was born in 2012. Yeah. Those are my three, three best memories. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Mike. Thank you for taking the time uh, to do this today. We hope you and your family continue to stay safe and we look forward to talking to you again soon. Uh, thank you for having me.